This week on Quality Digest Live, how about them bad apples? Plus, we discover the hidden benefits of radiographic testing. That and more when we come back. Welcome back to Quality Digest Live for November 18th, 2011. QDL is your weekly look at who and what is making the news in the world of quality. I'm Mike Richmond, publisher of Quality Digest. Yes, you are. And I'm Quality Digest Editor-in-Chief, Dirk Ducharme. Hey, remember, any time during the show, if you have any questions, just send them to qdl at qualitydigest.com, and uh, we'll answer them on the show. Yep. So as usual, we're going to start this week with some news items that caught our attention. First up, a University of Michigan study showed that employers can expect higher worker satisfaction in production if the company offers flexible hours so that employees can deal with crises and family situations as, as they arise. Sure. And not surprising, if companies aren't flexible, the employees will make the time anyway. They're just going to do it behind your back. Right. So the study points out that a lack of formal flexibility may lead to informal ways of dealing with the work-family conflict. And often co-workers are a part of these informal arrangements. So they might cover for an employee who needs to leave, right? Sure. So that the boss doesn't know. But the problem is if the boss doesn't know, then there's less management control and more potential for workplace disruption, which causes problems for the employee and for the employers mm -hmm. and eventually the company. So you really don't want that. So the upshot is the ideal thing is that a cooperative supervisor and a cooperative company usually means less disruption for workers and increased worker satisfaction and productivity. So basically, you know, we all have lives, employees got to do things, and sometimes they're, they're not doctor's excuses or anything. They just got to deal with family issues, yeah. and you got to have the flexibility to uh, let them do that. Good, good moral for all of us to That's remember, right. absolutely. Well, another interesting item that we covered this week, America Recycles Day, That's right. which was this past Tuesday, November 15th. Now, America Recycles Day, I know you know all about this, Dirk, uh, began in 1997. Now, in that period of time, Americans have embraced a, a much broader concept of uh, personal responsibility for conservation and waste reduction and waste reuse. Sure. I mean, you know, you think about it, 15, 20 years ago, you really didn't see so many recycling uh, bins. and Yeah, curbside recycling, that sort of thing. Sure, right? it, was, it wasn't nearly as easy as, as it is right now. Now, America Recycles Day really is a direct descendant of the environmental movement and Earth Day from the 1970s. But the connections go back even further than that. Uh, Henry Ford, for example, who we talk about a lot on the show, uh, was deeply devoted to waste reduction and material reuse 100 years ago. Sure. Now, absolutely, without a doubt, this is a quality issue. We've talked about it here on the show from a risk perspective in the form of HSPM, or Hazardous Substance Process Management. And it's clearly of concern for lean manufacturing and lean manufacturers as well. Now, we're keeping our eye on this, these issues involving the environment as well as those involving the energy industry in particular. In fact, we've got a special issue of Quality Digest Daily coming up on Tuesday, December 6th. That's right. And that's going to focus exclusively on energy and the environment. So be on the lookout for that one. That's right. So you know what else uh, you can't recycle? What? Rotting produce. There you go. So I knew you'd come <laughs> up with it. Rotten tomatoes, <laughs> rotten apples. Bad nice apples. little segue, okay, to, <laughs> that brings us to the next piece we're going to cover, which is the effect of bad apples in an organization. Uh, this was an article that ran this week. Um, let's see, who was that by? That was by... That was oh, by Knowledge Wharton. Wharton. Our old friends. The bad apple syndrome. Slackers and jerks can bog down productivity by as much as 40%. And what this article was dealing with is, and we've all had this, is, is how often you have in your own organization... Um, Often you have people who uh, are slackers or jerks. You know, they're, they're either the, the the person who's kind of perpetually cranky and snippy, or maybe they're Eeyores. You know, everything is always so dreary, sure. and oh my job, and you know my life sucks, and mm -hmm. uh, you know this company's going down the. T you know, it's just that kind of attitude. Um, Debbie Downer. Debbie Downer, and and this these kind of things, according to a study done in uh, Rotterdam, mm -hmm. what was it? Rotterdam School of Management. Yeah. These kind of things actually bring down the people around this person who is contributing to this, this negativity. They pervade the organization, and you understand why. You know, you complain about it over the water cooler, around the coffee pot, and before you know it, half an hour is gone of all this complaining and, and agonizing, and sure. suddenly nobody wants to work that day. Well, and, and it kind of makes sense. I mean, if you, if you think about it, um, if you've ever had to work with a person who's like this, 
they're hard to work. You don't want to work with them. If you don't want to work with somebody that you have to work with, productivity is going to be impacted because rather than work with them, you're going to try to work around them so you don't have to deal with them. Um, or even if you don't work with them directly, just attitude itself, you, you get kind of a uh, uh, of, uh, kind of this malaise and kind of this attitude that kind of goes through the workplace that really can be caused by one person just having a, a, a poor attitude. And that's really what this, what this article is dealing with. Perfect example of the bad, the bad apple syndrome, sure. Right. And, but there, there's really a difference here. I know you're gonna, you want to chat about this a little bit. Is this idea that is the person, has the person always been like that? Or has it something happened that made a change that made that person that way? Right, and, and this, this is kind of what um, there's an aspect of this article that, that bothers me, and it, and it has to deal with this change. So the question comes up in the article, well, how do you, how do you deal how do with managers or how, how do managers deal with this? So the, the one solution that really makes sense is, well, managers have to model the behavior that they want. So, you know, a manager's got to be slow to anger, right? They've got to, they've got to be listeners. They've got to, you know, listen to their employees. Uh, they've got to be up. You know, even if a company is going through bad times, no employee wants to see management, you know, being an Eeyore. They want to see positivity. You know, we, we'll, we'll get through this and, and we can all work together and that kind of thing, right? So you're, you're modeling that behavior. But the other route, and, and this is the one that uh, we can talk about this. This is one that kind of rubs me the wrong way. Is like, well, you just fire their butts, right? Right. right? Get rid of and, them. And and you get rid of them. And and one manager says, well, as soon as I see the problem, I just fire them. The other one is, well, you know, I'll maybe drop some hints to them, and then if that doesn't work, I'll just try to make their departure seem as if it was something that was for their best benefit. Mutual. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. That was my best minute. <laughs> I'm out on the street. Here's your box. Um, but it does raise a real question. One of the problems we have is if we're peer to peer and I see one of my peers and I'm getting tired of their negativity, I'm getting tired of them being snippy, I can go to them and talk to them on a personal level and say, dude, what's going on in your life? I, you, know, what's, you didn't used to be like this, what's, what's going on, right? Manager can't do that. A manager cannot legally, cannot bring somebody into their office and say, you know, I hear you're going through a divorce, and do you want to talk about it? It's like, no. You, no, <laughs> you can't, you can't You can't touch boundary. on personal issues at all. You can say, look, are you happy at your job? Because sometimes people are, attitudes is because you got the, the wrong person in the wrong job. And, and nobody likes doing a job they don't like, they don't feel suited for. That can lead to a bad attitude. But if, if that isn't it, what are you gonna do? It's like, and to me this is the crazy thing about our, 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 some of our labor laws. It's like, I can't talk to you on a personal level but I can fire your butt. Well, <laughs> yeah, you're <right. laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> sorry, I can't help you, dude. But yeah, right. Hope you find find a better job somewhere. Good, good luck. Or you're to happy, you. right? <laughs> you know, it, it, it's a complicated issue because there are laws that that state what you can and can't right. really, how you can and can't interact with your employees. The the other issue with this is, what if the manager is the problem? What if the manager is the Debbie Downer? And yeah. you yeah. know, the team members need to get together maybe and have a conversation with that manager and say, hey, what's going on? With with you and how can yeah. we kind of solve you can, that? You can talk peer to peer, and but manager can, legally can't really, in, in certain aspects, talk to the employee. And the employee, very likely, if you've got a grumpy, <sighs> snippy manager, most, most likely you're not going to talk to that that person. You're very just going to kind of work around them, which basically you might as well not have a manager then. I mean, right? If you can't, if you don't have a manager who's approachable because they're uh, because of attitude issues, then. You, you don't have a manager. I mean, that person isn't connecting with the workforce and that just doesn't work anyway. So, yeah, and yeah. these are issues that we, we see a lot. I mean, obviously yeah. we deal with a lot of organizations, we deal with a lot of managers, and people are always asking and interacting and looking at us for, well, how do you how do you do some of these things? How do you interact better with your workforce? And right. it's, it's, an, it's an important issue. It's something yeah. that we, we look at a lot, so uh, yeah. it's a good story. So yeah, there we go, management. Interesting, yeah, management story, it's always, always a good one. Yep. Well, we had another interesting story that we're, we covered this week that appeared in the Wednesday issue of Quality Digest Daily. Lower production costs with non-destructive radiography. Radiography, that's, that's right. That's right, that's right. Written by uh, Mike Forbes of right. TUV Rhineland Industrial Solutions. And uh, I think that, that we probably have, have that up on our screen share if oh, you want to sure. show that so that the, the people can, can take a look at that. Um, interesting, because this really looked at, at this from a lean perspective and, and how uh, organizations, particularly manufacturers, look at sorting and containment and problems that might pop up with with components in many cases. Sure. And and how you handle that, you know, whether you do it upstream, downstream, what the what the cost structures are. So <clears throat> we have Mike Forbes with us from TUV Rhineland Industrial Solutions. Mike, are you are you there? 
Yes, I am. I, and by the way, I do love my job. <laughs> you do love your job. <laughs> As not, do we. You're not one of those cranky guys, are you? <laughs> no, no, not at all. All right. <laughs> we have fun here. We have fun uh, prob solving problems for our customers, that's for sure. Well, I guess that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today is, is one particular way of problem solving. We, we are, and, and you know, we'd love to start off and, and kind of talk a little bit about radiography, and there's some, some different angles, some different elements of radiography that you talked about in your piece, and tell us a little bit about what, what radiography really is and, and how it helps manufacturers uh, ensure quality. Yes, uh, radiography is a good method. Um, it's not... Uh, um, save all but we can radiography is a good method where we can look at a part and find interior flaws or defects missing components things like that in order to you know find problems and uh, sort the product out uh, good product from bad product so that we can basically continue the service and that we can uh, the customer can provide good product to the end user <clears throat> and so Basically what we do is we use different methods like real-time fluoroscopy, looking at the part as it moves across on a conveyor system, sorting a bunch of product uh, to looking for particular areas of interest and finding defects. And then we can use uh, digital radiography in the field or in the laboratory environment. We also have computed radiography which uses a phosphor plate. Uh, again, very good method to look for defects and also to transmit the data via the internet. So there's a standard x-ray that we use also and uh, gamma radiography. All these methods uh, we use in different areas to you know, help our customers with their areas of interest or problems. Well, let's let's talk about that, Mike, and, and let's 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 look at what a potential problem might be. Let's say that I'm an automotive manufacturer and I'm I'm in the process of some assembly, and I I see that there's a problem with a component or a part from uh, from somewhere in my supply chain. Well, how would that? What would I do? How would I use the, the TV Rhineland Industrial Solution Services to to do, to handle that? Well, basically, it start with the phone call and saying, "Hey, I've got this particular problem." Um, is it uh, a method, is there a method I can use to feasibly find or sort this uh, flaw or this indication? And basically what we would do is we would take and uh, put it in front of our technical team and we'd say, okay, yeah, radiography, fluoroscopy is probably a good method. It can detect this area of interest and we can... Uh, we can basically see the defect and we prove the process and basically we'll start you know giving them an estimate now that process might be going to their facility in the field or it might be sending the components to our laboratory here depending on location logistics and you know cost and and what what kind of things might you be looking for i mean give, give us an example of um uh, uh, of something maybe you did on site rather than being sent to, to a, a TUV lab where you set up something on site to look for a particular type of problem. Describe what, what, what one of those might have been. Okay, basically welded components. We might have a flawed weld that we're looking for, looking for a defect or an area that it wasn't complete fusion or something like that. So we'd take the mobile uh, rigs and we'd go to that location. Uh, and look at the particular welds. Uh, we've done that in the bridge industry, and we've done it in the automotive industry. Um, there's just particular areas where that can be the most cost effective, where we can take a, you know, either an x-ray tube or a gamma source and go out there to the location and, you know, or if it's in service or if it's on the vehicle or things like that where we have to utilize the x-ray, that would be one of the methods that we would do. Now, is, is, part of the, is, is part of what's going on here is that you talk about weld inspection, but I think before you've talked to us about uh, being able to maybe look at a circuit board or look inside an assembled, oh, yes. uh, okay. some sort of assembled device, it's, it's faster to x-ray it than it is to, what, take it apart and do a visual inspection? 
Yes, like an, I don't like you said, electrical component. Sometimes in a switch, a wire gets pinched, or there's a missing component, and basically through the proper location of film to source, you can basically visually see the missing component or say, yeah, this one, this one is correct, or this wire's pinched, or this wire's misaligned, or the spring is out of alignment. Therefore, we're going to have a potential problem here. We can sort, move on, and, you know, say, okay, this one's good, next, and et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Move on down the production line, basically. And it's interesting because it really this is a, in many cases, this okay. is a situation where you're going to deal with this pretty far downstream. I mean, many times what happens is we, we come to this when the problem already exists. How do you push it upstream a little bit and how do you make sure that you're able to, uh, to save a little bit of money and time maybe by catching it earlier in the process? Yeah, a lot of times, you know, people with like prototyping and stuff like that utilize it uh, for a method is you take a look and say, okay, how does my component or how does this product look after the, you know, your PPAPs or your first runs and you start taking a look at them using radiography or the proper method and all of a sudden you might find potential problems with the product. But the other thing is, is you can see that your product is good and, it, and you're not going to have as many defects or potential problems down the road. So I would suggest, you know, the method of moving it up would probably save money down the road, basically by finding areas that could be, become potential problems through looking at it through x-ray. You know, we, uh, we know your organization, we know TUV obviously well, as many of our readers do, as, uh, basically as a registrar, as a certification company. So right. it's, it's interesting to, to talk to you a little bit about this from a, from a product perspective and, and an inspection perspective. How did your group get into this, this space? Um, basically, TUV uh, has been a registrar for quite some time, and a lot of their satisfied and uh, prospective customers we're looking for material testing services and basically they with part of their strategy uh, strategy was to deepen its industrial services business globally so basically they approached us and it's been a real good fit because it also has given us the ability to expand our services and to approach new markets and that were previously you know for a small company were out of reach Mm -hmm. So basically the, the the strength and core quality values of each company has really become a benefit to both of us. Great. Well, radiographic testing, really very, very, uh, very, u very important uh, system right. for, for testing non-destructively and looking at, at uh, certainly the supply chain, looking at, at different different parts and components of manufacturing. Right. And, and I think the important thing, and, and you guys talked about that a little bit, is that um, Kind of what we've been talking about here mostly is is reactive. Mm -hmm. uh, ideally, you wouldn't be uh, doing this inspection uh, after it a problem after already. you found a problem. Sure. Ideally, you could move it up further in the supply chain using the same using the same uh, the same technology. I mean, there's no reason radiographic testing couldn't be done uh, as a part is received into the country yeah. if it's coming from overseas or or even as it's leaving uh, the, right. uh, the the manufacturer of the part or whatever. Where, so. Wherever it may be. I assume right. that's correct, Mike, or that, that this is just as easily utilized at a, at a supplier plant before the shipment goes out as, as anywhere right. else. Yeah, exactly. Uh, radiography has come a long ways in the last few years. There's kind of been a phobia about the radioactivity and things like that. And the, with the new technology out there, and it's become much safer, and it's become much more uh, basically readily available. I mean, to to utilize as an inspection tool, and handled with the proper certified individuals and with the proper equipment, it can it can do volumes of cost savings for the customers. That's great. Well, hey, Mike, we're going to leave it off there. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Mike Forbes, again, everyone, National Sales Manager for TV Rhineland Industrial Solutions, joining us here today in QDL, talking a little bit about radiography uh, inspection for uh, sorting and containment. So thanks, Mike, for joining us. Uh, good segment. Thank you very for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Thanks. Sure, thanks, no problem.
Okay, so very interesting mm -hmm. radiography, and uh, basically, when, there's a lot of different technologies uh, that we kind of just touched on. Uh, some of them are more uh, work better for real time. Some of them, as he said, uh, m more for lab use. It depends of thing, what so. your application is. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Well, another topic that we've talked about a lot. Uh, actually, we haven't talked about on the show, but we have uh, written about in Quality Digest Daily is the idea of the visual workplace, and this is the idea where your workplace itself should speak to you. It should give you visual clues and cues in terms of your process. Um, it, it could be, uh, this could be signs on the wall, it could be something like um, uh, you know, a shadow board where you have the outlines of your tools so you know when a tool is missing or you know where to put a tool. It could be lines on the floor that define particular work areas or work cells. All of that is signage which gives the, the employee on the shop floor immediate feedback in terms of what they should be doing, where they should be going, and it just makes life much simpler than always having to refer to a, a process or procedure or to remember one. I mean, why not just visually show people stuff? Sure. Okay. One of the things is, is that when you deal with signage, there's a lot of way to make signs. You can just hand scrawl a sign, which frankly, a handwritten sign is better than no, no sign, sign at all. It's better to have a handwritten arrow and big block letters written on a piece of paper than it is to have no signage. But even better is to have really nice looking signage. It's taken more seriously. You, 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 you take a, a sign more seriously if, it's, if, it's look, if it looks nice, it's nice, nice block letters on a, on a yellow background, for instance, if it's a caution, than it does somebody's written watch out on a, a, you know, on a piece of paper, right? Sure. You just take it more seriously. So if you're gonna do that, you need a good printer. And that is actually what our tech corner is this morning. If we come over here to our, uh, to our gauge cam, what we've got right here is a product from Creative Safety, Safety Supply. This is called the Label Tac 4 Pro System. And what this is, is a, it's a sign printer, essentially. This one prints on four inch wide, and I'll show this up to the camera here, my camera, uh, Daniel, if you don't mind. Um, this, is, uh, this is a vinyl backing. And it's also, I can peel it across and it's sticky on the back. And it, it uses kind of a film transfer, uh, kind of a film transfer methodology for, for printing on there. So there's, there's actually a big, kind of like the old typewriters, if you remember, you have a big ribbon <clears throat> and it, it transfers the, the ink from that ribbon onto uh, film, if you will, onto the vinyl backing. Now what's great about these is that this is vinyl. This is very strong. Uh, you can stick this onto the floor and it's going to last you pretty much forever. If you want to take it up, you're going to have to scrape it up. We're not going to stick it on anything. We're not going to stick it on anything here. <laughs> uh, and it is vinyl, so it's very long lasting. So this is a special printer that's designed for printing on vinyl. And it's really, really simple to use. And I'll just uh, power up our, uh, our little system here. Um, I'm using a system that they sent with us. Uh, actually, uh, you can plug this into any laptop or any computer. We just happen to have a little uh, netbook here that they sent along with us. And really, I just got a word program up here. And I'm just going to print out this little uh, print out this little safety sign here. I just go File, Print. And it's going to go to the label tack 4. And it should spit one of these out. There we go. It prints very quickly and it cuts it automatically to size. So there you go. In just a couple seconds, I've got myself a danger sign. Now this comes on a long roll. Mm -hmm. So these signs, uh, this particular printer, it's four inches wide, but you're not really limited by length since it's on a roll. So right. your sign can be really long. So let me just show you that one, show you that one again. God, keep going for the wrong mouse here. <laughs> So this happens to be a danger sign, but you can have kind of, you know, reminder signs or, or uh, uh, you know, this one happens to be 5S. So I just come out here again. This happens to be in Word. We say print, and we'll print ourselves out a 5S sign. Now, as I mentioned, um, the, the vinyl backing on this comes in a variety of colors. Uh, this happens to be yellow. Uh, there's also white, red. They actually have a glow in the dark, mm -hmm. which is nice for uh, signage that might be on the floor, uh, maybe uh, uh, exit you know, uh, exit routes mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. So ink, ink colors as well as and I believe ink colors. colors mm -hmm. I believe ink colors change too. Matter of fact, I think like uh, you might have like a red ink on a white sign sure. if you want to do some warning signs mm -hmm. work that way. And you can see I just printed out a 5S. Mm -hmm. A 5S. Now one last thing. <clears throat> I was trying to think of what we could print here that would kind of show the banner capabilities mm -hmm. of this. And I did think of it. I mean, uh, in our studio here, um, well, there's a lot of things to watch out for. We got cameras all mm -hmm. over the place. Mm -hmm. We got lights that are really very hot. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a lot of uh, uh, stuff here that we got to watch out for and I did think of a sign here that'll work for a banner and I'll just print this out here really quick 
We'll come back here and um, go to my file. Print. And we'll see here an example of a very long banner that you can do to just kind of show the banner capabilities. And this is something that's very useful around here. This is something that we really have to watch out for here uh, in the studio. And um, I'll just have to find a place to put this once it comes up. This is a long banner, so it actually takes a couple minutes to uh, a couple, uh, couple seconds before it'll print out here. Hopefully I printed this right. And we'll see. So again, this is, uh, while I'm waiting for this, this is from Creative Safety Supply. This is the Label Tac 4 Pro system. And what I'm printing out here now is a uh, really long banner. This, is, this banner actually happens to be about four feet long. Wow. Yeah, and it'd be really useful for us here. Mm. Here we go. Comes out, automatically cuts itself. And, and there we go. If we go, say? if we go to my camera, it says, uh, well, I think you can all read this. And this is one of the things we really have to watch out here. Oh. Um, yes, our, our Emmy Award winning uh, director is... Uh, well, he's he's dangerous. I I've, mean, I've I've tripped over that a few times myself. <laughs> you tripped over his Emmy. Uh, he, yeah. Who's that? Flava Flav? Is that the guy I think, with yeah. the? Yeah. He was wearing it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's like a gold chain. He's, his Emmy's his hanging neck. from it. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Th well, thank person you. could get hurt with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is dangerous. So yes. Yeah, so, anyway, yes, you can print out very long. You can print out very long banners, very short banners on a variety of, um, uh, of different of, colors of that's vinyl. Right, that's right. And inks. That's great. So again, this is the Label Tac Four Pro uh, label printing system from Creative Safety Supply. Great for uh, great, great for, for a visual visual workplace. workplaces right. and and lean environments. Great, great stuff. Well, yep. Thank, thank you, Dirk, and thank you to uh, Creative Safety Supply. Correct for uh, supplying that. That's for right. Supplying that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Well, that's our show for this week. Next week we have a short week, of course, here at Quality Digest. We're gonna have a very very sweet and cute article from uh, Dottie DeHart, who is a frequent contributor of ours. A uh, very sweet article on being thankful for your employees. A couple things that we kind of talked about in the show today about uh, about employee interaction and and showing your appreciation for your employees. Very, very sweet story. Look out for that one next week in QD Day. That's right. And also, there is no QDL next week. It's Thanksgiving, so mm -hmm. we're going to be off Thursday and Friday, as I'm sure probably most of you will. Yep. So have a great Thanksgiving and enjoy your long weekend. And have a great weekend. Yeah, we'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.